Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time out of your busy day to view this video. And always to all of you that have subscribed, view, comment, and respond. Thank you. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, why Paul's writings are not for Christianity or Christians today. Now, this might uh, ruffle a few feathers, especially when it comes to the people that are professing Christians and equate themselves with the religion of Christianity. But we're going to show you from Scripture why it is that Paul's writings are only to those of us that are saved by grace through faith in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that he personally preached to Paul in the dispensation of the grace of God that is contained in the writings from Romans to Philemon, which is a doctrine for the body of Christ church today. It is not for religions. It is not especially for Christianity or Christians, and it will be shown to you in Scripture why that is. Now, if you're familiar at all with uh, religion and, and the religion of Christianity, there's a lot of parts in Christianity uh, that dispute or do not like Paul's writings. They dismiss it or deny him even. They think he's a false prophet. They don't want anything to do with Paul's writings. And I've seen a lot of uh, videos out there that do just that. And I've had people uh, even comment on some of my videos about the writings of Paul. And it's understandable. These people are really correct in their doings because Paul's writings do not belong. In Christianity. It never has and it never will. So it's kind of ironic that these people that deny uh, Paul's writings in Christianity are looked down upon those of Christianity that are Christians that want to accept Paul's writings. So it's quite a paradox when it comes to that, uh, don't you think? And that's why people are so confused and everything. And Satan's going to make very sure that those people that believe Paul's writings are for them today of Christianity and that are professing Christians, he will make sure they continue to believe what it is their religion tells them to believe because it's going to tell them to believe what it is they read and they'll read right along with them the writings of Paul. Now let's get into some of the reasons why Paul's writings are only to those of us that are saved by grace through faith the finished work, the cross of Jesus Christ in the revelation of the mystery. And the only way we are to understand this is to study his word the way Jesus Christ commands us to by rightly dividing the word of truth, which we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we went on to show you in Scripture what the word of truth is of, of what you're supposed to write and divide, and that is the gospel of your salvation. But I'm going to give you a few verses in here today that we're going to look at, and I want you to pay attention to what it says, and if you're reading, read along, pay attention to what it is you read. Because he's talking about the people here, mostly you're going to find a common denominator in all of these references that... He's writing to people that were something else in times past, but today, being saved by grace through faith, are no longer that kind of person. So he is writing to those that are saved by grace through faith. Because, ladies and gentlemen, as I've shown in so many videos prior, he never talks about Christianity. He never talks about Christians. He writes about none of that stuff in his writings. Mankind puts that all in there. It's not about religion with Paul. It's about being saved by grace through faith. If you don't believe in vain. The conditional if is if you believe. And that's all there is that is needed. But we've gone through that so many times. You can look it up in prior videos if you wish to. But let's start out in uh, the book of Ephesians. I want to give you some examples of why Paul writes to those of us that are saved by grace through faith that were prior were Gentiles of the flesh. Then we'll get into why Christian Christianity think Paul's writing is for them, the majority of them. Some dispute it, but that's the way it's always going to be with a religion. You're never going to have a total unity. Let's start on chapter 2. And I'll start out in verse 1. 
Verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of, of Ephesians says, And ye hath he quickened, or means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So he's talking to somebody that's been made alive in the Spirit by Jesus Christ. And that's the only way that can happen, is by being saved by grace through faith. The finished work of the cross in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 2. Were in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3, among whom also ye all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4, but now God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 6, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened, made alive, us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And he has raised us up together, in verse 6, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now he is talking about our spirit here. Something Christianity and Christians will admit to, but they want the flesh involved also. We'll get into that later. But here he's talking about the spirit that he has made alive because his spirit, in, and I've showed you what the, the secret to the, the revealing of the revelation of the mystery, the bottom line is the nut and bolts of it all is Jesus Christ's spirit lives within you now. And your spirit is with him. Where is it? In verse 6, and has raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, the same thing. The Spirit is with Jesus. And he talks about it in Colossians. You can look it up where our spirit is hid with Christ. We are dead, but our spirit is hid with Christ in God. Look at verse 7. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Where have you heard that before in my videos? Now, verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Verse 11, wherefore, remember that ye in times past, before you were saved by grace through faith, you were Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called a circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, by the Jews. Verse 12, that in that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And he broken down the partition wall in between us. You can read verses 14, 15, and 16. So he's talking to those that are saved now by grace through faith. He is not talking to any Christians. He's not talking to any religious people. And he's not talking about Christianity here, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking about the revelation of the mystery. Let's read on and see some other stuff here. Let's continue in Ephesians. Let's go to chapter 5. Chapter 5. Let's start in verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7. But not ye therefore be partakers with them. Verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light. In the Lord walk as children of the light. Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, providing that which is acceptable unto the Lord. And verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them, expose them. For it, verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, here's more examples that Paul is writing to those of us that are saved by grace through faith. 
because he always talks about how we were in times past and what we did <clears throat> and how we acted and what we believed. I'm trying to find one here that I have marked down. Let's start off in Colossians now, chapter 1. And let's start in verse 20. Verse 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Verse 21, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. 22, verse 22, In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Look at verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Then he goes on to tell you what the revelation of the mystery, the secret of it really is. And I've given you that in previous videos. And you can read about it from verse 24 through verse 29. Now let's show a couple more verses. Let's look in uh, 1 Thessalonians. And let's start in verse chapter 1 of Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 6. Verse 6 says, and ye became followers of us. This is Paul talking about him and his disciples preaching the revelation of the mystery. And of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy in the Holy Ghost. Verse 7, so that ye were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. Verse 8, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. You're doing it for us. Verse 9, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So they were idol worshippers before they were saved. And then we're going to look at something here in 2 Thessalonians about how they were disobedient. And let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and let's start in verse 9. Verse 9 says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Verse 10, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 11. For this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie. Verse 12. That they might be damned. That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth and have had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, those of us that are saved by grace through faith, brethren, Beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit, which is of God, and belief of the truth. Verse 14, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's many times we have walked in the past. Now let's go to the book of 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. And let's look at 2 Timothy and look at something here. That also talks about how we were in times past. Let's start in verse 7. For God, this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given 
us the spirit of death. And notice here, it is the spirit in the small s. So what spirit is that we're talking about? The spirit of death there, Satan's. But the power of love and a sound mind. Verse 8, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, to understand that, you have to understand the revelation of the mystery and the formation of the body of Christ Church, which was eternal in the very beginning, before the world ever began. It was already completed. Verse 10, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to the light, to the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause, verse 12, I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed on him against that day. He believed, and that's all he asks us to do, is to believe, if we believe. So you can see, there's a lot of places that uh, show us some scripture. What kind of people we were prior to being saved. And, and another good place you can go, I'm not going to give you a bunch of more scripture, rather that you go look for it yourself, in the book of Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 10. It gives a very good uh, description of what people are like without Jesus Christ's salvation by grace through faith. And you have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, faith, uh, salvation by grace through faith is a message strictly given by Paul the Apostle in the Revelation of the Mystery. It was never given by Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry in the Gospel of the Kingdom message, nor was it given by his uh, 12 apostles throughout their earthly ministry. They followed what Jesus Christ taught them in his earthly ministry because it contained the works of the flesh, and being born again of the Spirit to endure until the end, all these things they had to do. But see, now comes Christianity and Christians into this picture. Why does some Christian deny Paul? Because it goes against a lot of what their ideologies and their doctrines are because they want to mix law and grace. Paul says you can't mix law and grace. But Christians of Christianity mix law and grace. They've done it from the very beginning, and Satan will make sure until they're taken out of this world and cast into hell, waiting on the great white throne judgment to be cast into the lake of fire forever, that they never waver from this belief. Although read what Paul wrote, and they'll proclaim what Paul wrote. And I've heard... Christians have had conversations with them. On the whole, they believe in everything that Paul writes, but they also believe in everything that Jesus Christ said and did on his earthly ministry, yet half of what he did and said they don't do. They pick and choose, see? And they do the same thing with Paul's writings. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, what do you have? You have confusion, you have debate, you have division, you have controversy, you have all these things that are not unity in the spirit of Jesus Christ in the religion of Christianity amongst your Christians today. And when they read this, if you come and tell them from Scripture that this is only meant for the body of Christ Church, Romans through Philemon, Paul's writings, by salvation through grace, they're going to be in an uproar. They're going to challenge you. They're going to say, boy, this person's a false teacher. Because he's saying something that isn't in Scripture. And I just showed you in Scripture all the places that I showed from Paul's writings that he wrote to those that were non-believers before and by grace through faith the message is now clear that he can give to them and it goes on through the whole if you have to, you should read Romans through Philemon it's 2022 verses that Paul wrote and he talks about how in times past why the Gentiles were lost their minds were blinded how they can achieve salvation 
what has to happen and why they're held captive and by whom they're held, held captive and that the spiritual things of God are hidden to them. This discern, they're spiritually discerned unto them. They're hidden. That doesn't happen once you're saved by grace through faith. But it's happening to Christianity and its Christians. And Satan is going to make sure that it's going to always be that way. Because Paul warns, and I'm going to give you these verses again. I've given them many times, but Paul warns you about mixing law and grace. Because he said, if you mix law and grace, you have fallen from grace. Now, if you're fallen from grace, you don't need a PhD in theology. You don't need to have a doctorate in anything to have the common sense to realize if you've fallen from something, you're not going to achieve that. But then, you don't believe what it is you read. You believe what it is your Christianity, your religion, and Satan tell you. You see? How do they explain away what's written in Paul's writings? The not to believe them. I imagine it's the same way they do when they read Mark, book of Mark, when Mark tells them that Jesus Christ told his disciples, you can go out and drink anything poison, it's not going to hurt you. You can let any snake bite you, it ain't going to hurt you. You're going to heal the sick, you're going to do all these things. And they don't do half of them because they know they're not going to come true. So who knows? But anyway, getting back to that, why would anybody want to follow Christianity and its religion? Because, this, ladies and gentlemen, they're very clever. They promote not only the spirit, but more enticingly, the flesh. And that's where people are caught up in. A good example of that is just sometime, even you Christians that are listening to this broadcast or this video, ask yourselves next time you go to a Christian Bible study, and a lot of times they'll have a prayer session, they'll have whatever. Listen to what it is you, they're praying for, even what you want to pray for. Maybe you have a chance to express what it is you want to have prayed for. And I've been through a lot of them, and 100% of them, okay, which is really sad. Pray for everything in the flesh. I have never once attended a Christian Bible study where they prayed about anything for the Spirit. So that should tell you something right there. Because let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Let's see. 1 through 4. For sure. Verse 1 of chapter 5 of Galatians says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Who is he writing to here? He's writing to those of us that are saved by grace through faith. Because you Christians of Christianity, you're bound by your religion. You're bound by your local church, your local denomination, all your bylaws, all your faith statements, all your sacraments, all of those things, all the holy days of obligation, everything you must attend and do ought to include your salvation, which is baptism. Confirmation, communion, you name it, you participate in it. That's bondage to your religion. He says, never to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. In the case of the Jews, it was the law. With you, it's in the case of both the law and your religion of Christianity. Verse 2, behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, he's not talking about whether you've been circumcised in the flesh. Because circumcision in the flesh in today's realm, is done because of personal hygiene problems. Not because of religious problems. Some, if they're done by religious virtues, they're trying to keep the law. He's talking about circumcision today of the heart. But back then, it was circumcision that was of the flesh. He said, what would happen? Christ will profit you nothing. And you look back in the Old Testament, my gosh, if you weren't circumcised, you weren't a Jew following God. What a difference that is now, is it not? No wonder they're confused. Look at verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Now, if you participate in any type of law ab uh, obedience today, I don't care if it's the Ten Mower Commandments, I don't care if it's the 126 Leviticus Civil Laws, or the Seven Ceremonial Laws of the uh, Book of Leviticus. You are a debtor to the whole law. Look at verse 4. Christ has become no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, 
He have fallen from grace. Don't tell me that Christianity doesn't teach its Christians you must follow the Ten Commandments, or try to. Do your best to do so, because then you'll be justified in the eyes of God. When the Bible says in Paul's writings now, you no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. No man. Yet you continue to do it. Why? Well, you're blinded. Because you're blinded to the gospel that can set you free by grace through faith for your salvation because you've fallen from grace. Christ has not shined his light into you. You have not given the repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth by God so that you can come on to the knowledge of the truth because you're still held captive by Satan at his will. And the spiritual things of God which are a free gift to us that are saved by grace through faith is spiritually hidden from you. This is all in scripture of Paul's writing to us that are saved by grace through faith. The rest of you of Christianity and Christians are not in his writings. They're not for you. They never will be. It might become a shock to a lot of you. You might be hearing that for the first time. But you need to hear the truth regardless of what it does to the presenter. I will not back down with the truth of Scripture for anybody, for any circumstance you can imagine. Absolutely not. Now you've fallen from grace. So if you've fallen from grace, what does that say for salvation? That means you have no salvation. Oh, Satan tells you you have salvation because by golly, you do what it is your Christianity as a Christian tells you to do. You've done all these things. You mix law and grace. You've gotten baptized. You've gotten confirmed. You're born again in the Spirit. You've gone on to endure as best you can. You're trying to keep the Ten Commandments. You're going to church. You're going to Bible studies. You're doing all this works for the for the Lord. You think, well, you're doing it for the, the Jesus Christ of Christianity. Who really is Satan in disguise? I said that over and over and over again, and I will never back down from that statement, ladies and gentlemen, because he has already transformed himself into the angel of light. Where do you find that? You find that in Paul's writings. You don't find that anyplace else in Scripture because the only place Satan is going to attack people today is in the body of Christ doctrine. That he, he has Christianity and the Christians thinking they belong to the body of Christ church. So as long as he, Satan, has you believing you're members of the body of Christ church, he's going to continue to attack. And see, he cannot touch the body of Christ church or its members, but he does not want you to know that as a professing Christian of your religion of Christianity, which is really his religion. That's the sad thing about all of this. And he's got you right where he wants you, fully indoctrinated in the doctrine of Christianity. According to Scripture, now, of course, oh, my gosh, yeah, don't, don't leave that out. Christians are Bible-believing Christians. You know, I hear that term a lot, and I just, I, I shake my head. You want to talk about an oxymoron, idiotic, moronic statement. That is one. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And that isn't even for you. That's the saddest thing about it, because the Christians in times past were Jews. There was no Gentiles around when they were called Christians. Yet Satan has Christianity believing and telling you that you can be a Christian today. See, you just follow along with everything that's written in the book in any order you want to do it in. See, he don't go to the revelation of the mystery. God forbid if you would study and understand the revelation of the mystery and be saved by grace through faith, you might have salvation by grace through faith because you'll rightly divide the word of truth. You will understand everything that Jesus Christ will give you an understanding in all things if you consider what it is Paul says. And he says, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. It's all about Paul's gospel, which a lot of you reject. But isn't that the way Satan wants it? Because the more he gets to reject the truth, the more you'll continue to believe in the lie. And he's going to use you that reject Paul to try and get the rest of them to follow along. And then it comes grace believers like I am, grace, thy salvation by grace through faith, and give you a video and tell you, whoa, you're wasting your time, you Christians of Christianity. Because this gospel of grace by faith is not for you. 
It's not for you, and it's not to you in Scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can read it all you want. You can read it a million times. But if you continue in your religion, you cannot let go and call it dung like Paul did. You'll never be converted. You can continue on. I have comments all the time about people that want to know the truth, telling me they're saved by grace through faith, yet Christianity comes into play. And I dismiss it because they've already indoctrinated what it is they want to believe regardless of what they might be shown from Scripture. And that's the way it is. You can be freed from this. You can understand this. You do not have to have be under that yoke of bondage anymore. Look at the liberty that Jesus Christ gives us through Paul's writings, through the dispensation of the grace of God that we are in today, the revelation of the mystery, according to the preaching of Jesus Christ from Paul's gospel. And all you have to do is believe, because it says in Ephesians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, this is the gospel that can save you by grace through faith. It says, Moreover, brethren, verse 1, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory that which is preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, 4, I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and then he was buried, then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then in verse 8 of second uh, book of Ephesians, chapter 2, which we read, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet it is not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. And verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now you have to remember something, ladies and gentlemen, in the scriptures past, when he gives you the gospel, it says that what he received also, first of all, was that Jesus Christ died for the sins of all, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Yes, Paul's writings of scripture weren't around yet. But grace through faith was. But it wasn't preached yet until Paul came along. That makes Paul's writing the doctrine for salvation today by grace through faith only. Once that was introduced, it was shunned by many, just like it is shunned today by many. That'll never change until the end of time. Once the body of Christ church is taken up out of this world, then there's no more grace. And then, pardon the pun, all hell on earth will be released. You can escape all that. You can have the freedom to lay your head down the pillow tonight knowing that if you take your last breath, you're going to be instantly with Jesus Christ in heaven, hid with God. Not having to worry about anything ever, ever again. And you sure as heavens, in the name of everything is decent, will never be held once again in the bondage of your religion of Christianity as a professing Christian waiting on the second death that awaits all of those that believe in their religion, and shun Paul's writings of the revelation of the mystery. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, good Lord willing, until next time.